And holy crap, it looks like they have fixed this. In the older LCD upgrade kit, you could not change the screen rotation. So let me show you this LCD screen upgrade kit. Now this is for the IQ Link AIO modules, meaning it should fit all of the IQ Link enabled AIOs. And one really cool thing about this upgrade kit is you can install it if the AIO is already installed. But let me just show you the basic steps and we'll take a look at how the LCD screen looks. Let's talk about the contents of the package real quick. It comes with the LCD panel upgrade itself. It comes with a couple of cables, it comes with a USB splitter cable, and it also comes with a USB-C cable to connect the device. Now the installation is very straightforward. Again, if this is already installed in your PC, you can do this. So step number one, you want to remove this existing cover. Now there are no electrical connections to the cover itself, so you just basically need to get a good grip on it and you can then just remove it. And then it will just pop off and basically you just have a cover. Just, just make note of where these little tabs are on both sides because you're going to want to install the other panel in the same orientation. Now obviously you can only install it in one direction because here's the contacts here and there's only one connector on the panel. So you're going to just line those two up and you'll just line the tabs up in the side. There's some screws on the top and the bottom here, but you don't need to remove those. But basically once you get them lined up, it's a tight fit, but it does fit in nicely. Just make sure the seam is flush all the way around, indicating you got it installed. So that is it for the pump itself. Hold on to this piece, put it away, just in case you need it for in the future. Now, the next place you need to go to is on the AIO radiator itself. It does have the USB-C port here, and that's what you're gonna use this cable for. Basically, you're just going to make a connection there. This connector here, connect it up to a free USB header on your motherboard, or you could use a USB hub. I would recommend using a powered USB hub. Now, if you're a little bit short on USB ports on your motherboard, you can use the splitter. Basically, just plug it into one side of the header. Now, the other side could be used for the IQ Link hub itself. And then, of course, then you would plug this into your motherboard header or a powered USB hub. Obviously, you'll need to install the radiator, but at that point, uh, IQ should recognize the pump and the LCD screen and you can start having fun with it. So once you have the AIO installed, you have all your IQ link cables made, you've got your USB connection back to a header, uh, you're ready to power on your system. So once you get IQ loaded up, go ahead and make sure that you have the latest version of the software and the latest version of the firmware. So once everything is up to date, you can come back to the home screen here and you'll see all the devices you have added. Of course, you do see your link system hub here, which you can click on and see all the devices that are connected to that. You will have any fans connected to the link system hub. And then I can click on the LCD screen itself. The pump head itself does have a number of LEDs in it and you can manipulate these just like you can any of the other LEDs. You can change individual ones by clicking on them, but you can change them as a whole too. So we'll come here and let's just put watercolor. And instead of all here in the quick lighting zone, we can do the inner ring or we can do the outer ring, or we can do one or the other. And of course you can modify just individual LEDs on the device. So you just click and highlight which ones you want, and then you can apply whatever color you want to, or you can kind of drag and drop here. So the hardware lighting is telling the lighting what to do when IQ is not running. Uh, the hardware screen is also what to do when IQ is not running. Which display do you want? And of course you can change this. You get the default screen, or you can change it to an image or a GIF, and then you can save that change when you're ready to go. You also do get cooling here, which is where you can apply all of your fan curves and you get all of your fan temperatures if you're using the QX120. So under device settings, of course, you can see what version of the firmware it's running. You can check for updates. Uh, if you click the three buttons here, you can force an update or you can browse for firmware if there's no update available. Now from here, you can tell it what LCD screen case color you have. I think this is more for the model in IQ. And holy crap, it looks like they have fixed this. In the older LCD upgrade kit, you could not change the screen rotation. Now you could for GIFs and images and things like that, it would let you rotate the image, but for the built-in you know, sensor displays like the coolant temp and the CPU temp, GPU temp, things like that, you could not rotate the display. Anyways, it looks like they have actually put this in here. Uh, good for Corsair. So if we rotate that, it looks like it rotates it. Now you can set the LCD frame rate and the information panel here says decreasing the LCD frame rate will improve CPU performance. So it must take some CPU cycles to run this display. Now yeah, it goes up to 30 and down to one obviously. So if you're having any issues, play around with that. You know, if you're using GIFs and things like that. But come back up here to screen setup and this is where you're going to set all of the different screen types. 
Now you get a bunch of different presets in here, concentric, single bar, fade fill, monitor, uh, image or GIF you can change, aperture, dynamic bar, pattern fill, dual bar, blank, you can turn it off if you prefer that, uh, turbo, or you can go ahead and set a clock. Now on most of these, you can tell it which sensor do you want to display, coolant temp, you know, there's a whole list of these. We're not going to go through each one of these, uh, but you can get the main ones that you want, the GPU temp, CPU temp, CPU load, things like that. Anyways, you can set whatever sensor you want, including all of the fan and temperature sensors as well. And then you can rename the sensor if you want. So we could uh, name this Hardware Artisan Coolant. And once you hit enter, changes it on the display, looks good. And then for most of these, you can change the color schemes that you have. So for high temperature, you can change the color here that it has. You can change it. So if I think it, because it is a low temperature right now, we can kind of put some greens in there. You can, you know, you get the idea. You can kind of change what this looks like. Uh, for the label color, you can change that as well. If you want to go red, you can, blue. Anyways, you can customize it is the point of this. Uh, max temperature, minimum temperature, you can kind of set the temperature range of how that works. Uh, single bar over here. Now, all of these are going to be a little bit different, like the bar gradients, background. It kind of changes the setup for the colors and things like that. And of course, you can change the name on all of them. And depending on what sensor you choose, it's going to change the parameters that you can change. Like for CPU load, it's going to be max load and minimum load. And of course, that's going to dictate which colors get set. So the dual bar here is kind of cool because you can choose from two different sensors. And of course, you can change the bar color, you know, the max temperature, minimum temperatures, and then, and then change the background and the label colors. So that's kind of a cool one where you can get a couple of things on the screen at a time. And of course, it has a clock on here and you can change it from 24 or just a standard. You can change all the colors and things like that. You get the main idea. Let's go back up to image or GIF. Now from here is where you can add an image or a GIF file, depending on what you want. And you can add and you can upload whatever file you want. But I've got a couple of here. I've got the Hardware Artisan one. And then down here on the right, you can kind of zoom into that and zoom out. Kind of make it fit, kind of drag it around on the screen. Looks good. And then of course, we can rotate it. Now, I was always able to rotate it even in the other LCD upgrade kit, but you couldn't rotate all of the sensors and things like that. So anyways, that's a great addition. Just saying. And it's got a couple of built-in ones for you, but you can upload any GIF file that you would like and play around with it. Now, another function of this that really is kind of a crucial function is the custom screens list. Clicking the plus sign under the gallery screens list, we get all of these kind of presets here and we can go ahead and select one. And we get all of the same settings that we got before, the colors, the temperatures, and we can rename it and all of that. But over here on the right, you can set how long do you want this to display for. So let's say we want it to display for five seconds, just as our test here. We can go ahead and set that. So it's going to be on the coolant temp for five seconds. Now if we click the plus sign again, we can choose another one. Let's go ahead and put single bar here. And we'll go ahead and change it to GPU temp. And of course, we can change all of the colors if we want and rename the label same as before, but let's put that to five seconds. Then we can add another one. Let's go ahead and put a dynamic bar. And from here, we'll put CPU load. And again, we can change those if we want, but let's put that to five seconds. Now you can keep adding here. They default to 30 seconds, but that'll be up to you. You get the idea here is every five seconds, it's going to change what's on the screen. So it's a kind of a way for it to cycle through all of those. They can also put a GIF or an image in here, which is really cool. So you can really kind of customize this to do whatever you want. And it will just cycle through every five seconds, easy enough. That's really a cool feature right there and probably the one that I've used the most. But overall, this has been a lot of fun to play with. It looks really good. It looks better in person than it does on camera. The colors are more vibrant in real life. So the fact that they have introduced the rotation feature on the sensor panels uh, really makes this even better in my opinion. Now I can use it in the tower cases, which I was kind of disappointed previously when I ended up having to pull it out of there. But overall, if you're looking for a cool way to kind of uh, amp up your build, you know, you're doing the IQ link anyways, this is really kind of a cool upgrade. It's really easy to install and configure and play around with, as you can see. Uh, you know, the AIO itself overall has worked really well for me. You know, being that it's a 360 millimeter radiator, cools just fine. I've had no issues with it. It's got lots of headroom on the temperature for what I'm doing with it. Uh, 
So the only real overall issue I've ever had with the IQ Link system is just the cables. And it's really not even a con. It's kind of a good problem to have, meaning that you can kind of customize all the lengths. Just make sure that you have some additional cables on hand of different lengths and the 90 degree connectors for sure. Uh, that makes the installation much easier when you have those available. And it works really well. Greatly simplifies cable management. I really am learning to like it. It is expensive, unfortunately. I think this LCD panel was 100 bucks. I uh, purchased that with my own money. I would highly recommend this if you like the look of it and if you think it will add to your build and you really like the sensor output. It's a really cool thing to have. Check it out.